how's Ramadan going for you? Good, pretty good, man. That's good, that's good. I want to ask you some more questions, but I got to be live so people can watch. <laughs> and what are the questions? Uh, questions are about mostly. Um, so it's going to be um, a little bit about the social injustices that's, that are going on right now in the world. And then um, from that, we're going to go on to um, on, your when, when you say world, hmm? when you say world, where? Like um, social injustice is going on right now in the United States um, with all the, uh, the killings going on, the shootings, and um, just based off that. And then um, from that, we'll go on to a little bit more about your MBA career and um, what it's like uh, fasting and playing. And then um, a little bit more about your background of growing up and how you got into basketball and stuff like that. Perfect. Uh, and if you're ready, um, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and again, we want to thank our special guest, Ennis, for joining us today. And as a community, um, on behalf of our community, um, here in Minnesota, we want to thank you for taking out the time and uh, speaking with us. Um, you're an inspiration to our community. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, Ennis, so just to start off, man, um, first thing when I hear Ennis Cantor in the NBA, the first relation that I get is, first of all, he is Muslim and um, always speaking up about uh, social injustice. Um, something I follow you on Twitter. Um, you've dedicated each game um, to different people in Turkey that are being oppressed or uh, for whatever may have happened. And I want to shed some light on that, um, you know, to kick us off now, you know, kind of, can you give us a background about, you know, what makes you, or what started you get into this so much? Well, I think it's, it's, it's very important to, to talk about basketball. The platform are not a football player. You know, I feel like this is a for me to go out there and talk about You're an athlete. There are so many you know, people out there are, are, are following you. So I think, you know, for me, more importantly, go out there and think about what, about, uh, what's going on. So I, my homeland, uh, so I was like, you know what? This is something whenever we want to get the split star, uh, that came, that went to one of our, one of the people who are, you know, Political. And, and it's, if you don't mind, bro, sorry, I don't mean to be rude. Um, you're, I think the mic is being covered by, because you're cutting off while you're speaking. Perfect. There we go, bro. Yeah. Just do this. Hold on a second. Perfect. Yeah, it was just cutting off while you were speaking. Go ahead. Right. So, so that's why I was like, what, what can we do to, you know, just bring uh, more awareness? So, I mean, there are so many, if you look at political prisoners and journalists are in the jail right now in, in Turkey, my home country, Turkey, that's the one thing that I'm really uh, focusing on, uh, focusing on. And uh, so that's why I've, I've been trying to bring awareness of what's going on over there the last, probably like say, seven, eight years, you know? So like, uh, so that's what we tried to do, do did the, this year. And, it, and we, the feedback we got from, you know, from the people, and it was just amazing. Yeah. Monty, go ahead. Cool, cool, cool. So um, uh, recently for you, um, a couple of days ago, you wore uh, something uh, in a pregame, um, a hoodie that said, invest in women, pay women. And um, I don't remember what the last one was. Um, so, yeah. So uh, can you elaborate more on that? You know, I think it's it's uh, f f first of all when you talk about equality, and it's, it's really important to you know just bring uh, awareness of that uh, issue too. I, and also, if you uh, look at it right now, there are so many um, you know people always talks about the men in sports. And I, I don't think the women in sports don't get enough credit that they deserve. You know, because I know how hard they work. I know how much effort they put in and how much they sweat they put in. So I think as a, as a male athlete, I was like, I want to do everything I can to su su support it, uh, support the woman in not just basketball, but women in uh, sports. And, um, you know, after I wore that uh, hoodie, uh, many of the, you know, people like started with CJ McCollum and, 
in yeah, any yeah. other athletes. Like and, 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 yeah. and yeah, athletes, celebrities were just like, where did you get that hoodie? I think it's very important to just, like I said again, you know, just when you have this uh, p- platform, uh, it gives you so much, uh, you know, uh, so much uh, big platform to talk, talk about whatever you want to uh, talk about. So I think women's rights was definitely was uh, one, one thing that I wanted to, you know, just uh, bring uh, awareness. Sure. Um, you know, Anis, I, I don't know if you're aware, but a lot of our um, Muslim community members uh, actually are familiar. I don't know if you're familiar with the show Resurrection. Um, it's, it's about the Turkish history, uh, which they have on Netflix. And it's something that um, I know uh, a lot of people who are from Turkey don't really um, appreciate the show as much as far as because of how it kind of sheds a light on it. But for the people who have seen the show, they've seen a kind of the historical part of, you know, how, you know, like I didn't know much about Turkey, for example, for me to call you Abe, I didn't even know that that happened because of the show. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of important to get somebody who grew, you know, who knows how the country is. Um, what is one thing that you kind of want people to know? Because, you know, originally most of us are from East Africa. We're from Uganda, actually. So what's one thing that you feel like is important about Turkey? You know, Turkey is important, like a very, played a very important role, especially in Middle East and, and, and Europe, obviously, because of the joke. Geog- uh, political position and also it's between Asia and, and Europe and um, I think that if, I don't know if you guys ever been to you know Turkey or you know search Turkey is the, the history over there is just unbelievable you know and there are mosques pretty much like all over the uh, country not just in, in, in Istanbul but very very big large you know uh, uh, mosques but uh, I think you know it just Turkey is a very beautiful country and it could have be the bridge of Islam and West, uh, but just just because of all this, uh, you know, uh, political issues are happening right now. Sadly, it's just not possible. But the problem is not the country. The problem is the regime. So when the once the current uh, regime changes, I think the things will get so much uh, better. But like I said again, it just um, whenever I talk about an issue. I don't want people to understand me wrong. You know, I love my country. I love my flag. I love my people. And Turkey, like the food over there, the culture, the dance and everything is definitely amazing. But, um, you know, though, just because of what the political problems are happening right now, it's it's not possible to be the bridge. But, yeah, um, it's gonna get, but it's going to get better. Yeah, and we can kind of relate to it. I mean, there's so much going on here in the United States with, you know, police brutality, for example, it doesn't mean we don't like, you know, our country. We don't like, exactly. we just we have to speak up when there's something mm-hmm. wrong, but I'll let Monty go ahead and take it over from, from here. So I'm um, sticking with that, uh, the top, the topic of Turkey, you know, growing up gro- for you, um, coming to the United States overseas, um, for, for, for your MBA career right now, what was that like? Like what got you into basketball? Because when I think of basketball, I think of, okay, all right, United States, you know, and maybe Canada. And then now more recently players are going overseas to China and Spain and stuff. But for you growing up, how, how, how did you get into basketball? I actually wanted to be a soccer player because that's like the number one sport in the whole uh, country. But obviously I was very tall. So it just, obviously I was very slow for it. So it didn't really happen. So, and then I switched to basketball. Um, you know, actually, my family didn't want me to play basketball. They were all about education. So, yeah, I remember, you know, first time I let, my dad let me play basketball, he was like, hey, I want you to be a good student before being a good a basketball player. So that was one of the biggest reasons that I came to, you know, United States, uh, because, you know, in Turkey, it's not possible to, you know, get your education and play basketball. But here... You, know, you can go to high school, you can go to college, then you get drafted. So it's like you can get your education and play basketball at the same time. So that was one of the biggest reasons that I came here, you know, meet with some new people, meet with some you know, new cultures. And um, it was definitely an eye opener uh, for me. Um, you know, after I came to America, obviously everything was different. You know, the food, the religion and the culture, the people, the language, everything was uh, different, you know. But um uh, you know, I, I think people were very respectful. They were very respectful here. You know, they, you know, whenever, you know, to my teammates or like anyone else, and whenever I say I am Muslim, you know, they were very, they were very respected. You know, we always had obviously questions for each other, but we never disrespected 
each, each other. So that was, that's, that, that's the one, the one thing that made me uh, really happy. And, and on behalf, I, I think I want to speak on behalf of Lisa myself as a Muslim man in America, I want to thank you because it's, it's athletes like yourselves who <laughs> say, and, and, and they are like, I am Muslim and it's easier for us where today, for example, yesterday, just Kyrie was like, you know, it's, it's the holy month of Ramadan. I'm fat. Like, for us, it makes it so much more easier. Like I can be like, yeah, I'm like Ennis. I, you know, we, we have Ramadan going on, which is huge. And so I, I you know, just those small words that you say, we really appreciate it. Um, n- next, I just want to put some light on, uh, I don't know if many people know, but you were actually born in Israel, right? I born in Switzerland. You were born in Switzerland. Okay. Yep, I born um, in Switzerland. There was now, now I, I know there was um, in regards to how long were you there actually in Switzerland for? Um, I literally stayed there for like maybe nine months and then oh, I, moved okay. to, I, moved, okay. I moved back to uh, Turkey. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Well, Mati, we can go ahead and I think jump to the next topic, right? All right. So the next topic is the one question that I'm sure like when, when I posted on my Instagram that, oh, you know, we're, we're interviewing and it's Cantor, you know, like if you have any questions, let me know. So the one question that so many message me that you were there when Dala Dame hit the goodbye in the yeah. in the in the playoffs against Oklahoma City. What was what was that like? Like I, I remember uh, watching the video. All I see is you just running to Dame and he's just waving him goodbyes. So what was that I'll, like? I'll be honest with you, man. I've been in the league for ten years and I played almost seven hundred games, right? many playoff games and many, you know, play conference finals. I played with some many, many like different teams and different atmosphere. But like that shot is the wildest shot I have ever seen in my whole life. Not just NBA career, my whole life. I mean, for whom to score 50 and do like a crazy step back over a really good defender. You know, people people know how good of a defender Paul George is. Oh, yeah, you know, so. step back over him. It just, it was just unbelievable. You know, that moment that the whole crowd was going wild. You know, whole arena was just so loud. I was like, oh my goodness. I can't believe like, you know, but like two years ago when I was playing for the Blazers, obviously, you know, like I practiced with those people every day, right? Um, so people think like it's a bad shot. It is a bad shot for everyone else, but not for Dame, you know, because he actually works on that shot. Like, people don't know. Like, he actually, like, in a practice, right, we practice five on five, do all that stuff. And then after the practice, he stays extra and work on that shot. So, like, I understand what people come in. It's like, hey, it's like a crazy shot or whatever, but not for Dame, you know, because he works on that shot. And, um, no, I think it's just that was definitely the wildest shot. And I think – that after that moment, I'm like, oh my goodness, he's definitely like top two, top three point guard in the whole league. That is so cool. That was awesome to watch. So yeah, I can't man. imagine I was in person. Yeah, um, I remember like in my like I'm 22 years old, and there's two shots for me that have been like my, the craziest things I've ever seen in basketball. One is Ray Allen against the Spurs yep. in the finals. And then the second one was the Dame. I remember I was watching with my family. Everybody was screaming. I was like, yeah. I got I to gotta get a Dame jersey right away. <laughs> if, if you remember, uh, I'm trying to think, was it 2013 or 14? They were, the Portland was playing a playoff series against Houston Rockets. Oh, and then, yep. The they Dame made that. another shot like that. Yeah, but he wasn't even, like, like close yep. to the shot, the one shot that he just made, like, two yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that shot was definitely the uh, wildest. Mm-hmm. Now, um, Ennis, now I kind of want to take a little bit on light into the relation that that we have as Muslims. How do you pull off? I know Doris Burke did that segment in the playoffs about your, your fasting schedule and how you eat, uh-huh. uh, you know, because over here, for example, we got to, you know, people get crabby when they're not eating. And I don't know <laughs> how you're playing when you're not eating. So how does it work? What like how are you pulling it off as far as your schedule goes? So I think it's like the important thing is like like a lot of people ask me that question. A lot of people like whenever I say like I'm fasting and the first thing they ask me like, don't you don't even drink water? I'm like, no, we're not even allowed to drink water. (laughs) But they're like, are you going to (laughs) die? But like, no, I think I think important thing is like it's all about in your head, you know, because like I try to fast once or twice a week um, during the season. It's actually a a, a sunnah too. 
Um, so once or twice a week during the season. So once once the like Ramadan comes, Ramadan time comes, my body's already uh, used to that. You know, uh, you know. I think like it's one thing. Obviously, like you need to drink water as much as you can. I think like that's like the not being able to drink water. That's the uh, toughest part. So whenever in the sahur time or like whenever like you you're about to break your fast, just drink water as much as you can. Um, you know, I think one thing that is inspired me the uh, most. Two years ago, I uh, texted Hakim, Hakim Olajuwon. You know, he was obviously, if you guys know his story, that he was fasting while I think they were in the NBA finals. And his numbers were like almost so much better, you know. So I'm like, hmm, that's very interesting, you know. And he inspired me and I texted him like, hey, man, you know, I just, you know, your story just very inspired me. Uh, do you have any advice for me? Um, <clears throat> you know, he texted me and say, the more challenging it is, the more rewarding you're, go- you're going to get. You know, um, so he was very proud. Of, he told me that he was very proud of me and ha- happy for me. Um, you know, the one thing that shocked me the most about him, I asked him, like, like, what do you eat when you wake up for supper? He just said, oh, I just, you know, drink water and ate dates and uh, eat oatmeal. I'm like, that's it? Wow. I literally, what I, like, I remember, like, waking up, I was literally eating, like, Everything I can like <laughs> peanut butter jelly sandwich, pasta, burrito, this that. I was literally just eat as much as I can. You know, I don't know how he did it. It's unbelievable how he did it. Yeah, that is. But um, but I think like it's all about like obviously like I feel like whenever you fasting, God like you know uh, Allah gives you so much you know strength, you know, to just go out there and show the whole world that you can do it yeah. so my mind is very very sharp because i want to show everyone that i can do it yeah no it's, it's, it is amazing yeah it is amazing and for you to be able to do that while playing nba games is 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 all the strength the example of all the strength. i think like the one thing that motivates me the most just my teammates i remember it was like a two years ago it was right before the <clears throat> it was right before the uh semi-finals on Western Conference, uh, Western Conference. And uh, I was about to, you know, break my fast. And, and it was right before we, we went out there to warm up. And I told my teammates, like, listen, you guys go out there and just warm up and I'm just going to, you know, break my fast and come out there with you guys. And then the whole locker room just started to uh, talk about Ramadan, you know. And then the, the respect that they showed me gave me so much hope and motivation because, like, they could have be like, hey, listen, dude, this is like one of the most important games. Like, what are you doing? But instead of that, they were like, you know, we respect you so much. So. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, you are. Sorry. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. Bro. Just 100%. keep on doing what you're doing. Um, my next question is a little bit more NBA based again. Um, so you've had you're considered an NBA veteran now, you know, with Stinson, mm-hmm. Utah, Boston, Oklahoma City, Portland. Now, who is like one or two players that who you play against that whenever you see that guy on the other bench, you're like, you know what? I got to bring my A game. Like he's the yeah. one, you know, like, but like toughest to you. You basically saying like toughest to guard. Kind of toughest to guard, but the guy who brings the best out of you. Oh, in my team or the other team you're talking about? On the, on the other team or your on team. On the other team. Yeah. I mean, if you play against like Embiid or Jokic, and if you don't bring your A game, then you are going to be embarrassed. They're going to embarrass you, you know. <laughs> if you don't bring your game when you're playing against Jokic, he's going to have 40 and 15 and 15 on you. If you don't bring your A game against MB, he's going to have like 40 and 20 and 10, well, something crazy on you. But I think, you know, for me, to the, probably the toughest to guard is, I will say, probably – I'm trying to think, you know, I, I always go between Jokic and Embiid. It's like, you know, I'm like, which one is tough for the guard? It's a very tough question, man. You know what I have? I, I, w- I would probably say Jokic because, like, now, like, he can pass and he can, you cannot send him no double teams, you know? But, like, overall, I, 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 if you say, like, who's, like, toughest to guard in a whole league, 
I'd probably say either James Harden or Giannis. You know, yeah. Luca's getting up there for sure, but I'd probably yeah. say like James Harden or Giannis. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so this might be because my I'm I'm nervous right now. I'm starstruck right now, but I just want to get from your opinion. When was the time you were starstruck? You got into NBA and you're like, or did that ever happen to you that you were like, like, yo, I, I'm seeing this person in person. Like, I cannot believe this is happening right now. Was it maybe you saw MJ? I don't know who it could be for you. Um, so my first regular season game was against Lakers at step to step against Kobe Bryant. Right. Like, think about you just turned 19, just turned 19. You step into NBA. Right, you are playing in step at step the center, front of like almost I don't like twenty thousand fans, and you playing against like old time Laker. I'm talking about Andrew Bynum, Paul Gasol, Lamar Odom, Kobe. Um, I'm trying to think who was on Derek Fisher. I'm trying to think who was on the who, who was on that team. That was a uh, championship team, wasn't it? They won the final. Championship team, yeah. So yeah they Paul Gasol. So they, they were like a, a championship team. Yeah. And like you going out there, and I remember I, I'm on a bench, right? And the coach called my name. I was so nervous. I'm like, dude, I'm literally going out. I'm about to go out there and play against like Kobe Bryant because like growing up, Lakers was the only team I was watching. So I was a, like a Lakers fan. And obviously like, you're watching Kobe and Shaq and all those people. And you're literally about to go out there and play against those guys. You have to guard, like, if there's, like, a pick and roll switch, you have to guard Kobe, right? So, anyway, the, the coach called my name. I went to the uh, sub ta- uh, table and I just sat down. And I'm like, the game stopped, something happened. I checked in. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm literally in the game playing against Kobe Bryant. So, uh, there's one position I was guarding – I believe it was Andrew Bynum or Paul Gasol, right? And Kobe was on the, on the wing, other wing. I'm on the opposite block. And he take like a, he, I think I believe he did like a crossover, right? And then he take one dribble and he got up. I'm like, there's no way I'm jumping. I'm just going <laughs> to let him go. I'm like, I don't want to get posterized in my first NBA season game. I'm just going to be like, my bad. But I'm like, I'm, there's no way I'm jumping. There's no way. Oh, so he take one dribble, he took off, he dunked the ball, right? I'm like, my, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. you just checked in the game. You're a 19-year-old kid playing against <laughs> Kobe Bryant, right? So, and then, like, there was, like, someone shot the ball. I got the rebound, offensive rebound, and I shot it. They found me. I missed it, but they found me. I'm on a free throw line, right? One side, there's Andrew Bynum, I think. Other side, there's Pope. Gasol, there's Lamar on them. They're just waiting for me to shoot. I'm like, I cannot believe 20,000 people are screaming. And like, there is all that Kobe is waiting for me to shoot the ball. <laughs> it, it, it was a wild moment. Anyway, I shot the ball. I missed. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can do this because I'm so nervous. So I made the second one. I'm like, okay, I better get used to this. You know, this is going to be my life from now. So I better get used to this. Um, so that game, I can, I just can never, never, never forget. You know, I'll probably say like see Kobe Bryant and playing against him actually was just a different level. Yeah, I would need like an AED machine. I'd be in shock <laughs> at that point. Like, <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Go ahead, Monty. Um, so I think this is the last question um, yeah. that we have before we go to a little activity kind of game thing. So I know um, Muslims in professional sports there's there's not many there's a very select few number of muslims in uh any professional sports when you go from basketball football um baseball hockey um so what would you say to uh, um young probably not even muslims like just young kids who want to who want to achieve their dreams who want to play professional sports what is one piece of advice that you have for them i will say self-confidence for sure that's like that's very very important self-confidence and then you know, I think like if you're if you want if you want to be an athlete, you know, you cannot just go to the gym and work out for three hours. That is not enough. Say let's let's take an example of you know just being a basketball player. If you want to be an NBA player, going to the gym and just work out for like three four hours is not enough. People think like oh I worked so hard. If you want to be an athlete, you have to live like an athlete. You know, because your body is your everything. 
So you got to eat well, sleep well, you know, you got to take care of your uh, body, you know, you got to practice hard, you got to, you know, lift hard. So like every, I remember, let, let me, I'm sure like there's so many, you know, uh, our young, you know, kids watching us out there. So like one thing I will tell them, I remember when I was like nine, 10 year old, you know, my mom was always, you know, telling me, stay away from the junk food, don't drink too much soda, don't play too much video games, go to sleep early, take a nap, do this and do that, whatever, right? I'm 28 years old and my MBA coach is still telling me the same thing. So I'm saying like, if you want to be successful, especially all the, you know, young kids out there, listen to your parents because they are the best coach for you when you're a teenager. Um, but I think that the other thing is just like discipline, dedication, hard work, and just believing in yourself because there are so many players out there. They're very talented. They're very good at what they do, but they don't have the enough like self confidence in, in themselves. So just go out there, man, you know, just do what you do best, play hard, play smart. And the most important thing, have fun. If you're not having fun, then you're not doing the uh, right thing. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Monty, actually, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, come off of live and just wrap it up here because we want to respect okay. uh, Ennis's time. Um, so Ennis, if you don't mind just holding us for 10 seconds, I want to thank everybody for joining in. And again, thank you to Ennis uh, for joining